All right, well, this is today's main package. Got two more, but let's just get this opened up and get started. Okay, because we've got these four DVDs. This one is actually kind of neat because I don't think y'all have seen me um, catch up on any old stuff in a while. Hmm. I'm trying to think how to best open this because it's really taped shut. I'm wondering if I have a good feel. It feels like it's maybe inside a box inside of this thing, so maybe I can cut this a little bit open there. but not least, we got this, which I'm just being a little careful for because the labels are on weird places for this thing. There we go. Should be close enough. This is probably the receipt. Okay, yeah. This is the real thing. There we go. Why don't we go ahead and begin with this since it's over here? This is the Princess Principal Limited Edition. I don't know what am I looking at. I think I've seen the name pop up a couple times on the anime subreddit. It's heavy. It's a little hard on the carpet tunnel. Not too bad, but Ooh, we've got information down here. So we've got English dub, we've got Region A, 12 episodes on two discs, 300 minutes. I'm trying to decide what kind of anime this is. Is this a bunch of princesses learning stuff? Are these people actually all female? This one, two special features. We've got Japanese promos, commercials, picture dramas, clean opening and ending, and Sentai trailers. You know, same information down here. This was up there. I think this person is on disproportionately more. Or maybe I just can't tell them apart. There may be a couple people in here. That are very similar. Similar. Oh look, uh, that's almost the uh, same as the normal back cover, except it doesn't have the information down there. But that does have disc one, disc two special features. So I guess this is a kind of reversible cover. Neat. Next up, we have the storyboard book. Oh, cool. Yeah, storyboards. Makes sense. Next up we have Secret File. Looks like a lot of character information. Uh, I see some artwork. Neat. We have the Staff and Cast Interview Book. Okay, yeah, those look a little more interviewee. And then last but not least, we have uh, Extras, which shows characters and characters. Spies, petticoats, anti-gravity, and a generous portion of royal mayhem. Okay. I think that gives me a vague idea on what this anime may be like. Okay, I feel like I need to open this because this is some sort of special cloth thing that I can hang up on the wall. Even though I just don't have, have any wall space left to do so. If I ever got my own house, 
I wonder if I would hang these up, or if I would do a wall scrolls, or if I would maybe frame these and hang them up. Hmm. Oh shit. There we go. This one is a nice, weird shape. One of these characters ring a bell to me, but I will hold this back up. I'd say it's my backup, as in folded backup plan. I think this was probably on the inside like that. Oh, should I put it back in here? I don't know. This is, I guess I am putting it back in there because I just did. Who to thunk? Well, looks like it's in the last bounce. Now this, this is heavy. Whatever this is. And since I don't remember what was coming with this, we're taking a look. We're diving in. Man the long boats and women the short boats. That way we've got everyone covered. That's an old anime animaniac quote. Okay. So this is covered in paper. Holy shit, what is this? I mean if you were to call these coins. What the fuck are these? Are these coasters or something? The coasters are kind of fancy for that. Wow. It feels like it's... I mean, it feels... Like the vast majority of the weight of this thing has been these. Like, they weigh more than the books combined. Now, I have to take a look at all of these. This is... Something different. I don't even know what this is. Four of them? Like, okay, it's four of them exactly the same. Which makes it seem very coaster -y. Shit, if these are coasters, then I finally have coasters. But these are some heavy-duty coasters. Okay, let's just assume that the other two are the same. Alright, because there's a total of four of these. Is that how many characters there are? I think there were that many characters on the front of the one thing. Huh. Wow. So this is actually a neat addition, whatever it is. And it gets, it looks like, like pure copper or something like that. What am I thinking, just putting that one in there? They all go in here. To the texture. Um, yeah. They're waiting for you. Yeah, okay, yeah. The test chamber thing was a Half-Life 1 quote. I don't know why. I guess my mind's just fine. I'm just going to read it. Let's seal this. See if we can put these all back in here. I guess my idea here being that without these inside here, it doesn't hold its shape as well. I want it to hold its shape, ergo, I'm putting them in here. Although, whether or not that did a good job, eh, no, that's fine enough. Uh, Cat Shit 1. So, um, I've got this on DVD. It's not super new, but I don't know. The Blu-ray's been rare enough that, um, actually I'm going to check to make sure this isn't like, yeah, this looks pressed. So it looks legitimate. It costs like $180, which, you know, that, that goes to show why. It's taking me so long. Next up, we've got Dragon Ball Super, DVD and Blu-ray, or rather DVD and Blu-ray, part six. And I'm wondering if they are going to be combining some concepts that they've already introduced. Let's see, I think there really isn't that much, I think, to look at on the back of the DVD version, because not only is it gonna be the same as the Blu-ray, but I think, you know, the more relevant information will be there. And I think the art on the discs is going to be the same. In fact, that art is the same. So obviously they really like this image for a um, cover. But let's um, take a closer look. So we wanted to make sure it's region A only. There's, of course, English dub. Transcendent battle between hatred and hope. Well, okay, extras are 
Dragon Ball Super at Anime Expo 2018 interview with Sonny Strait. Dragon Ball Super at Anime Expo 2018 interview with Matthew Mercer. Dragon Ball Super at Anime Expo 2018 interview with Kyle Hebert. 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 Textless opening songs, textless closing songs, trailers. And the inside is not going to be too much different. Yeah, pretty much the same artwork. So, you know, it's just like a Blu ray version of the DVD version, except we get to find out which regions this one's for. Next up, we got a Blu ray version of Human Crossing, which I don't know anything about what this series even is. It's, I've had it on. DVD for ages, I think. I've been curious, but obviously not curious enough to fire it up or to even receive a Google or whatever. But, you know, let me take a look at that. And on the back, I see Region A. I see an out of focus includes all 13 episodes on one disc English, audio, Japanese, video 480p standard. So that would be why it's in standard definition on one disc. Who released this? Made in Japan. Interesting. It makes sense. It's probably from that era where upscaling doesn't really mean as much. So, you know, a nice simple release. But finally, Human Crossing released on Blu-ray. And then last but not least, we have to check underneath this sticker for any sexy, um... Hmm... Anything, I guess. Well, there's a sexy hand if you like hands that are on the hip like that. Uh, kind of... I think I vaguely remember her. What's with that look? Is she... Is that... Was that her normal look? I kind of remember her being okay in a world where there's a couple of people I don't like. Region A, English dub. Takes two to raise hell. And I'm kind of glad that this arrived now because I think the old Twin Exorcist box set, or rather the Winnipeg Edition Volume 1, maybe holds um, all four of these volumes. Okay, let's actually take this out uh, right there. I see that. That means the cover's reversible. Disc 7 and disc 8. Disc 7. Don't want the DVD to be loose. Those are a little more fragile. Disc 8. Red person. So, I guess having said that, that why don't we actually before I end this um, I see two and three are right here I can actually just take these things here and move them out of the way Let, let's see if uh, they actually all do fit here in box one you know sometimes I don't do this but I know I'm kind of curious as you can see there's all the old stuff one Two, three, okay, yeah, and what does this go up to episode four on? Um, this is, ouch, this is ten episodes. I guess I want to take a look to have an idea of how many episodes we've got here. We've got 13, we've got 13, we've got 14, and we've got 10. So that's a total of... Uh, 48 plus something. No, I don't know. It's uh, like. Is it 15? Jeez. These things are all sliding. Anyways, that's what the all four of the twin exorcists look like in their one box. That's pretty cool. So, um, let me pop number four out here and put it back on the top. And end this section with here's this week's anime DVD collection update where did this week go it feels like oh you know what my last update was a long time ago wasn't it two weeks ago it felt like it was a long time ago and I guess that's why now if I remember correctly I was watching March comes in like a lion volume 3 unfortunately can I actually remember anything about it? About where it go? I guess last time I was at the part where I was still kind of 
before the halfway point in this series. Yeah, I'm remembering some of this stuff now. It was a pleasant volume, I guess. I think if there was anything about the previous volume that was a little off, it was that it wasn't necessarily about the main character directly, I guess. It was kind of more like the the second volume was less about him and more about there were some things developed about him, but mostly it seemed to be focused on somebody else. And that was supposed to help him, sorry, him, our main character, kind of um, develop a little bit. And we've seen, like, we saw him do some interesting things in this volume. I'm trying to think what I can say. But for the most part, when it came to how it dealt with the bullying, um, I, I'm trying to think if it actually feels like it resolved it, or if it feels like it did a good job of making it feel like you didn't need to worry about it being an issue as much. So it's not the punch in your gut like Shigo Fumi's bullying episode is, but it was an interesting approach. But I think that's about all I can really say, because anything else would be spoiler. So after that, I guess what I decided to do was to sample anime, especially since I kept not feeling in an anime watching mood, and the way to solve that in my mind was to just try a bunch of different things. Because, you know, as I'm, I mean, it, I know it doesn't look like I'm making a lot of progress on this stuff, but the truth of the matter is all the stuff that was off camera over there is actually, well, down to this pile down here, whereas these are just stuff that I haven't, um, that I've watched that I need to mention here before I can put them away. Basically, if I watched it, then I prioritized putting it onto my servers. Um, and I'm trying to break this stuff down because it kind of impedes visibility for um, other people. So, like, if I'm playing Monster Hunter, which I will be later tonight, uh, it's not as easy for them to see my screen, per se. And it would be nice for them to, but I kind of figured I should deal with the excess piles there first. So I just, I'm breaking it all down, I'm making good progress, and the good news is even though I'm back uh, at going to work and not on PTO, I am slowly making progress on ripping stuff, and I just need to make sure I'm ripping stuff faster than it's coming in. All right, and so that kind of explains a lot of stuff. I'm not even sure how I got to some of that stuff from just this. So, the Silver Guardian, um, I was kind of curious, because I kind of talk about a guy who maybe can be hired or is good or whatnot, and it's okay, but it's out, it's definitely flawed. I'm trying to think of all the stuff, if maybe I gave this one more time than any of the others, but let's see. Um, one very um, easy criticism to level at it is that the first episode is definitely not a very good way to start the series. You kind of have your main character and they show you they show him doing awesome stuff, but they don't really give you any context for how awesome that is to everybody else, whether or not it means anything. You know, because like this was a problem I complain about with the Chinibio stuff is where they, when they animate the characters doing something really awesome, usually that's just in their own heads and it's not something awesome really happening so much as something being animated. And maybe you enjoy it not because it's awesome but because you know you like to see the imagination put to life but this one it doesn't really establish what the context for the battle we see is other than um, pink haired girl saying he's fighting for our world or something like that. And then it flashes back in time to stuff to set that stuff up and it ends up being a little um, convenient is not quite the right word. It just kind of has, it feels like it's very set pieces. You can kind of, you don't even have to look very far to see, oh yes, that's not a real tree, that's a cardboard tree, or things like that. And when, it, when it's done with the plot, you know, they can make it kind of hard to attach to it. So for example, um, it establishes that he's really good in this RPG by saying, oh wow, look at that person, he's wearing a um, beginner outfit, but he beat this super hard late game boss all by himself without any, um, all by himself, right. And 
that doesn't feel real. In fact, that feels very forced and fake, you know what I mean? And whether or not that sort of thing kind of interrupts your um, enjoyment of the anime is kind of up for grabs, but there are a couple of small things like that in here where I think the show is a little too focused on wanting to be at its ending to kind of realize where it needs to be in the present, maybe? And, you know, I didn't watch a whole lot of it. I might have given it, like, three episodes, four episodes. I'm trying to think if I can give y'all, um... I guess... I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything, because I don't, I don't know what I can say with that. I don't think it would spoil anything, but I don't know if I myself know enough to know what is or is not something that could be used to hone in on where I was. But for the most part, I think I gave this one a pretty good try, and I'm pretty much accepting that I'm not watching all of it, because again, I'm doing a sampling thing where it's like, some of these anime, I think part of the reason I let stuff pile up is sometimes I'm interested in checking them out, but I'm wanting to devote the entirety of my time to it, and then I keep thinking, well, I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to put 12 episodes into a series I might not like. Like this one, you know, these characters, they all look kind of cute, and this is maybe cute slice of life sorts of stuff, and whether or not I would enjoy it maybe depends on, I guess, what sort of slice of life it comes out as. So for this one, you know, I just watched the first episode, and I think that's actually fine. It's not the, you know three episode standard that a lot of series sets up. In fact, I've kind of heard that Kimono Friends, like the first three episodes are weird, but then it starts getting good, so that one might be an exception to that rule. But that one would be a high priority watch just because it's kind of made an impact, especially since there's a lot of people with those avatars. But this one, um, it, this one was okay. Um, I guess if there's anything about this that made me say, yeah, it's okay, after one episode and not pursue it further, it's probably that it, um, I didn't feel any good compelling reason to continue, I guess. Like, it's just cute girls doing cute things. The humor wasn't quite there, um, with what I prefer, I think. Or maybe the slice of life-ishness wasn't quite heartwarming. I, I'm not entirely sure. Like, it, it, it didn't get anything to hook me, but I can't really say that's necessarily the anime's fault, because it just could be an incompatibility with me and it. But overall, you know, it was kind of neat to look at. You know, and again, I'm trying to sample a lot of these things. Like, Scum's Wish. I actually dug this out from the bottom of a pile over there, because I had remembered I was kind of curious about it. You know, I, I, you see on the front, okay, there's a bunch of girls, there's a guy, there's a guy, so... I kind of wondered, is this something where, um, <coughs> is this a harem anime where, I guess, a guy who's a scumbag is getting some sort of harem wish and he maybe doesn't deserve it? I don't know. <coughs> hmm. Sorry. It feels like a little, I don't know. Anyways, it turns out that's not the case, and this one is a bit more interesting, but I guess... I didn't feel like watching a very drama-heavy anime. So, basically, the idea is, um, on, on this cover, the person who is a scum is actually most of them. I don't know. It could actually be all of them. It establishes this thing where... I guess the back says it all, but um, these two characters like those two characters, but those two characters are seeing each other. And because they can't have the person they want to be with, they're kind of together in this relationship where each of them agrees that the other one will treat them like the one they really want to be with. And they'll break up their fake relationship when, if they ever get a chance to get with the main one. So, you know, these two are scum, but the idea is, you know, they're not the only ones because you have other ones that, like... I, I don't know if I want to go beyond that, because that's the premise as set up as in the first episode. And the other characters, they seem to be presented as stereotypes, but then it's more about how these stereotypes don't necessarily mean that the characters are good, fun, or whatever. They're kind of scum, too. They're kind of, you know, everybody in this is supposed to be selfish and 
not really considerate of other people, I guess, or at least all the main cast is. And I watched a handful of episodes because there were a couple of interesting twists, but it's still very drama heavy. I could feel that um, I didn't want to put too much more time into it. Not that it was bad, but, you know, again. Um, Urahara, I, I only put one episode into this one. I guess... Because it's a little too off the walls, maybe? Like, it's not so off the walls that it blows your mind, per se, but it's... Just got a lot of... Things. So it's an interesting visual experience for people who are kind of into that sort of stuff, but... I'm trying to think, let's see, I wasn't quite sure what to make about just the whole setup in general. Because it seems weird. And it didn't seem weird enough to make me curious. So, you know, just a good sample. In, an interesting show. And last but not least, at least in the pile of stuff here that I watched, I watched a Takunomi. Or at least uh, two episodes of it. And it's a neat little show. Um, I'm trying to think, because it seems like there's elements of the sh each episode where maybe they talk about how to prepare certain kinds of drinks. And I'm, I don't mean like, oh, you mix one part this, one part that. I mean like, how do you get the foaminess of a beer to be just right? And how do you make sure you get the right kind of temperature mixed throughout a glass without a bunch of ice melting into it? Or weird little things like that, which are probably neat. Uh, I'm not a drinker, though, so... Um, in that regard, I didn't find the um, that particularly drawing, per se. Um, but, you know, this one was actually a more interesting slice of life, I thought. Maybe because it kind of represents a slice of life that is leagues closer to what I do compared to, like, Konohana Kitan. But I don't think that's exactly the case because... <clears throat> I guess it's similar to a problem with uh, Aria that I'm maybe thinking of, where one problem I have with Aria the animation, I mentioned this when I rewatched um, some of the first season, um, there feels like there's this unrealistic disconnect of the characters living in their world. And in the case of Aria, this mostly shows up because, you know, they're gondoliers on Mars which is, you know, being terraformed or something like that. And maybe there's hints of mystery and whatnot there. But the characters mostly spend time as if they have work to do, but never actually doing any, and it not really mattering. It's kind of similar to the action where, you know, you have somebody with a gun, and they shoot somebody else in the face, and it doesn't feel like there's any consequence. And so you're like, okay, so why do we care about the person shooting the other person in the face? And it's kind of similar here, where they, in theory, have these jobs, but not only do they not need these jobs, but they're just doing a lot of nothing, then it feels like there's a disconnect from reality going on there. And I think Konohana Kitan, while not, maybe not as bad in that regard as Arya, maybe has a slight air of that, and Takunomi doesn't quite. It, it feels like these are people who are living in a world. They're maybe characters designed for the show, but you feel like, okay, well, she got lost on her first train ride in the big city. Okay. And now she needs uh, clothes to fit in with her co-workers at work. Okay. Even if you haven't done those things, it feels real, like this is what you have to deal with. It, it, there's a realism that, you know, exists here, and it's interesting that I somehow brought the shirt into it. I'm not sure if that's good, interesting, or bad, interesting. It's just thoughts. Anyways, other stuff. Let's see. Uh, I did finally beat um, World of Light, the single-player campaign for um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And I, th I don't remember. I think last week I might have mentioned something about having a little carpal tunnel in the right wrist. And it's still a little bit there, but it's finally getting better. Um, I beat World of Light two days ago, so it was work. <clears throat> but anyways, um, my thoughts were, once I kind of got 
a lot of the spirits I wanted and I just didn't worry about leveling them all up and just mostly leveling up ones that were potentially more interesting than the ones I was using. I mostly focused on those, upgrading stuff, fighting a lot of stuff, and overall I have to say while there's a lot of tedium to fighting everything, it's a, it's um, a lot more engaging than you would think it would be to explore the maps they've created, especially as it gets later and later in the game. And I actually, uh, I was a huge fan of the finale. It did feel pretty epic and pretty, um, like, like it led up to that without me starting game thinking this is what it was going to lead up to. And at the same time, um, throwing some things at me that I didn't expect to have thrown in my direction. Well, at the same time, you know, since I was playing on easy mode, I was able to manage all of it. And so it wasn't bad. Uh, outside of that, um, I can't think of anything else super notable I did video game wise. I mean, obviously a little bit of Monster Hunter stuff in preparation for tonight, but not really. Look, I, I made notes on some armor set I want to put together, but I don't think the priority for putting that is that high because it doesn't change anything tonight. And at the same time, um, I don't know, we're just going to do whatever we're going to do. Whatever that means. So, given that, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep at it. Sharpness, sheath sharpen. I wonder. Yeah, I'm just thinking if I can get both of those. And I'll worry about that later. For now, I guess that's this week's anime DVD collection update. Yeah, and I'll... I'm still having to think about how I want to show VR stuff because there's been a request to show a little bit more of that. That would be pretty cool, but don't don't expect it anytime soon because I'm not I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to do stuff. But I'm still kind of adjusting to going into work, and that might be something I'd consider if I'm not working on these and that I'm trying to play with you know something else. So you know I should keep at this, and yeah, y'all. Have a nice week.